What's up? This is Siren. I'm going to talk about my Vipassana meditations, specifically the actual technique of Vipassana. So this is a bit of a spoiler. What I'd like to do is really break down how the 10 days goes. So day one is just an introduction. Um, it's a pretty crazy experience because you're kind of raw and just in wonderment like, oh my god, what am I doing this? Why am I here? So what you'll find is that people that are doing the retreat come from all different walks of life and are on all different levels of meditation. Um, this one was my first time, but before we began, I talked to a few people and learned that it was some people's second time up to their 10th time. And um, what they'll say, and I agree with, is that every single person has a different experience. And if you do go several times, each of those experiences are different. So I will just speak on mine. So for my first time on the first day, it was pretty crazy. I was just like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, but I knew that I wanted to stay. I said, okay, just take it one day at a time. Day one is just kind of getting into it. The first things that they teach you is just to focus on the breath. What they say over and over again is just observe, just observe. And the schedule that I named is what we follow. So the first group meditation, you, you sit down, they give you an assigned place and a bunch of pillows. And what I will admit is that the first few days, um, because I practice yoga, I'm like, oh, I can, I can sit in lo full lotus for the whole hour, no big deal. No. Big fucking deal. By the time the first day came, on that first hour, my legs were killing me. And I was like, this is day one, how am I, and this is, day, this is meditation one on day one, how am I going to get through this? So I added a pillow there to prop myself up. And then by the third day, I added two pillows. On the fourth day, I seen that somebody that had left had a meditation bench, so I, I basically sat on a meditation bench, put two pillows on top of that, and put three pillows in front of that so that I can either fold my legs over or bend my knees over it, and I literally made myself a lazy boy out of the pillows and a meditation bench because I was like, I need to be comfortable if I'm going to sit here for hours and hours a day. Because if you notice from the schedule, if you follow it rigorously, that's 12 hours a day meditating, so I wasn't about to do that to my body. So days one to three, um, basically acclimate you to living like a monk. They keep it pretty simple as far as what they tell you during the meditation. And so while you're sitting in the hall, your eyes are closed, you're surrounded by your fellow meditators. They have the servers who are people that have completed a course sitting in the front facing the teacher. And then the teachers are facing you. All the females are on one side, all the males are on the other side. And that's the only time that they allow the males and females to be in the same room together for the course. And so you're sitting there and you're hearing this guy, he does a couple chants. Just to sum it up, he basically tells you to observe the breath. Not to judge it, not to make an exercise out of it, but literally just observe it. In yoga, we have something called pranayama, which is basically breathing exercises. They can range from timing our breath to three inhales in, um, three counts for an exhale, you know, breathing in through one nostril, breathing out through one. Kapala Bhatt, he wears <laughs> really fast breathing, they call it skull cleansing. Um, there's all kinds, and that's what I'm used to. And in pranayama, the tool for reaching the place of no mind is pranayama. But vipassana is very different in that you are literally supposed to let it be and just observe it. Find a way to be relaxed with it, not try to change it, and just accept it for what it is. So day one, I was like, okay, cool, this is different. And day two, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of getting it now, whatever. By day three, I'm like, dude, do you really have to keep telling me the same thing? I get it. Observe the breath. Observe the breath. He, he also urged us to feel a certain part of our face, like this triangular area where the, your, the air is hitting your nostrils, etc. So that was the tool. And then by the fourth day is where they say they're going to really introduce you to Vipassana. And that is when you go deeper than just observing the breath and you observe sensations in your body. And then once you do that, the theory is that you begin to cut deeper into the things that you've been holding. They call them sankharas, which are basically things that you've been keeping inside that you may be addicted to or things that hurt you that you just haven't let go. Things way deeper than the psychological level. Um, the analogy that he used in a story was... Um, a sankara is like carving a line into a rock versus if you carve a line into water, the water just goes right back to its original form. So we're trying to be like water. Day four through six, you're just focusing on observing sensations. 
and he does guided meditations where he kind of lets your mind and awareness focus on different areas of the body, not just externally, but internally. Um, and then days 8, 9, and 10, you are now not only focusing on sensations, becoming aware and observing, you're really moving your awareness by your own will. So now that I've been through the experience, it's kind of weird to just talk about it like that because it's one of those things that you just have to experience in order to understand what it means. And what supports all this is, um, is two things. One is being able to talk to the teacher if you choose to um, during that one hour a day that they uh, take students in. Um, and then the second thing is the teacher's discourse at the end of the night. And Goenka is a wonderful speaker. He's actually extremely funny, um, very intuitive. And something that helped me is that I allowed myself to be open to what he says, but um, allow myself to not agree if I don't agree. And I didn't agree with some of the things that he said, but by far the, the message of love and the message of learning about yourself was beautiful and positive. During my 10 days, um, day 6 and day 8 were the hardest. Um, day 6, I found myself getting really pissed off, and I didn't know why, and I told myself, I'm just going to get through this fucking meditation, um, and maybe I'll leave early. Maybe, maybe by day 7, at least I could say I've been here a week, I've already passed half. Like, every day you, when, when I feel those feelings of weakness, um, I would debate with myself, well, I don't have anything to prove, and who cares, at least I came and tried, and... Um, you know what, um, no, no one will judge me if I just leave now, and you know what, I already learned what I need to learn from this, I'll just go, you know, just because they say that I have to stay for 10 days, that's their opinion, blah blah blah, like I went through all these things, but, and sometimes the only thing that would convince me to stay is that, you know what, it's not about that these people are dogmatically saying that I have to stay for the full 10 days, let me just challenge myself and take it for what it is and stay, so I'm, and I'm so glad that I did, so day 6 is the first day that I talked to a teacher and I broke silence, um, but they don't consider it breaking noble silence because you're, you know, you're getting guidance from a teacher. And she just gave me, you know, some insight and was just kind of nice to speak to another human. Um, and helped me guide along my path and kind of just let me understand that it is what it is, you know. And that's kind of the big lesson. A word that they repeat over and over in Vipassana is anicca, which means change. Or things are always changing. And when you understand that then you'll find much more peace within yourself and peace with life. On the 10th day, I was surprised to learn that we actually do get to speak. He told us that to get back into the real world would be a shock, so the 10th day allowing us to speak to each other would be a shock absorber. So that 10th day was amazing. Um, it actually made the time go by faster by, because when I learned of it on the 7th day that I was going to get to talk on the 10th day, it almost took away another day for me and by the seventh day it has drug on so long and you've challenged yourself so much that you it kind of gave me that glimmer of hope that second win to finish this thing strong and so when we were finally allowed to talk I got to talk to my roommate finally which was awesome because imagine like being a roommate in a close quarters for so long and literally never making eye contact and that's usually what you do with somebody when you're mad at them so once we were able to talk for a few minutes I felt this huge pressure again, and I almost didn't want to talk, I almost wanted to run and hide. I actually had earplugs with me and I put them in and said, okay, I'm just going to sit here for 30 minutes because um, in my dorm, all the girls gathered in the bathroom, which is um, just one wall away from my room, so it was like really loud and echoey, and I was just hearing all this chatter, and after not hearing it for so long, it was just shocking to me. Um, but by the time um, I spoke to my roommate and I just started meeting everybody, and then we all went to lunch, and I took my time talking to most of the women there. Oh, let me just say that I met some really amazing people that I hope to sustain friendships with and it was so refreshing just to just be able to speak about the experience and somebody noted that this is a rare opportunity because not only do I get to talk to fellow Vipassana attenders but people that went to the same one I did so we can really divulge specifically on our experiences together and um, I got insight from other people. Some of the things that I felt um, were affirmed by talking with other people, and I got to learn other people's perspectives on their experience, and it was just amazing. And so that's definitely a great part of the 10 days. So next I'll talk about the actual technique itself as well as kind of give a general overview on my understanding of meditation. So thank you again. I will see you next video. Namaste.